Thanks for the intro, Manoj, and thanks to all of you for holding out until now. I'm Nico, and this is joint work with Niels Fleischhacker, Johannes Krupp, and Dominique Schröder. The title of this talk is Two Message Oblivious Evaluation of Cryptographic Functionalities, but what I really want to talk about is how to use security proofs in a non-black box fashion. Um, to elaborate on that, let me uh, give you a little intro, what I mean with that. Usually, when we want to prove secur security of more complex protocols, we first try to uh, um, reduce the security of this protocol to some, the security of some primitive. Uh, think of this primitive as, for instance, digital signatures. Then, in turn, those this primitive might come with a hardness reduction on its own, of its own uh, that reduces the security to some hardness assumption. In turn, uh, if we compose those two reductions, we will get a security reduction that bases the security of the protocol on the underlying assumption. That's how we usually do it. What I will show you today is a, a slightly different way of basing security of uh, some protocol on a uh, hardness assumption once this is not possible. So uh, I will show you a way to compile a primitive into a protocol um, and a corresponding way to compile the security proof of the primitive into a security proof for the protocol. So let me set the stage for that. Uh, we will do a secure function evaluation where we have two parties, Alice, Alice and Bob, who want to compute a function f jointly with input x by Alice and input y by Bob. Say we have a, a protocol pi. Now um, we say such a protocol is secure against malicious adversaries if, um, uh, say once one of the parties is uh, corrupted, in this case, Bob, um, if there exists a simulator uh, that simulates the view of this uh, corrupted party while having only black box access to some ideal functionality that computes the, uh, this function f. And uh, what is usually important is that this simulator s uh, runs efficiently. Okay, um, some well-studied aspect of secure function evaluation is its round complexity. Maybe starting with the work of uh, Goldreich and Oren, uh, we know that, yeah, uh, sec secure function evaluation uh, uh, is not possible in two rounds or with two messages if we require, require efficient, evalu uh, efficient simulation, sorry. Um, what Goldreich and Oren showed that, uh, was that zero knowledge, uh, which is an instance of secure function evaluation, is not possible uh, in two rounds. And this is an unconditional impossibility result. We also have uh, further going results uh, that, <clears throat> that show that uh, black box techniques are insufficient to go below five rounds. There's the work of Katz and Ostrovsky, who show that uh, if we only use black box techniques, we will need five rounds of interaction. But then um, we know that if we grant ourselves uh, a setup, uh, then we can do secure fu function evaluation in two rounds or with two messages. A folklore result is to use fully homomorphic encryption and NISX. For instance, uh, this was mentioned in Craig's, Craig Gentry's thesis. So uh, the motivation of this work is uh, to look into what level of security can we achieve in two rounds without any setup. Uh, one possible route is, of course, to relax the simulation requirement. Uh, as we know uh, that these impossibility results do not hold for unbounded simulation. So all the, uh, those two uh, impossibility results that I mentioned, they uh, assume that the simulator has to be efficient. So there might be hope. Let me now show you a rather general 
blueprint to do uh, secure function evaluation in two rounds, a uh, very intuitive approach uh, based on fully homomorphic encryption. Now, uh, say Alice, uh, where's the point here? Uh, uh, how did I, okay, uh, here it is. Alice um, has an input X1. Uh, she generates public and secret keys for a fully homomorphic encryption scheme uh, and encrypts her message X1 uh, uh, under this key and sends both the, the public key and uh, the ciphertext to Bob, who can homomorphically evaluate um, a circuit C where he hardwires his own inputs uh, on Alice's inputs um, or, or on Alice's ciphertext C1. So Bob will get uh, an output ciphertext C2, sends this back to Alice, uh, who can use her secret key to decrypt. This is an uh, intriguingly simple protocol, and of course, the natural question is, what security does it offer? Now, clearly, uh, if we use a fully homomorphic encryption scheme, it should provide in-CPA security. So uh, the privacy of the receiver's input, input is guaranteed by CPA security, but for uh, um, sender security or sender privacy, we need a slightly different property called circuit privacy, uh, which guarantees that this circuit, uh, this ciphertext C2 that um, uh, the, receiver, uh, the receiver obtains encodes no information about the, the circuit C and thus the input X2 that uh, Bob used to compute this ciphertext C2. Okay, uh, let me elaborate a little bit more on circuit private FHE. So usually we define circuit privacy uh, via the existence of some uh, simulator. We say that uh, a scheme has circuit privacy if uh, given a ciphertext C, which has been computed by homomorphically evaluating a circuit C on, input, on, on some in, well-formed input ciphertexts. Um, if this is indistinguishable uh, from a, a ciphertext C that has been computed by a simulator who just got the output of the uh, circuit C on inputs X1, X2, X3, and so forth, and uh, uh, this should still be indistinguishable if uh, a distinguisher gets both uh, the, uh, cipher, the output ciphertext C, the input ciphertext, and uh, public and secret keys. Now, uh, we're looking into uh, malicious security uh, in this talk, so semi-honest circuit privacy is not enough. Um, Therefore, we're looking into malicious circuit privacy. Malicious circuit privacy requires an extra algorithm uh, called the uh, extractor. In malicious circuit, circuit privacy, uh, uh, a distinguisher may actually choose uh, the, both the uh, public key and the input privacy, uh, the, the input ciphertext that go into the circuit, and thus uh, those ciphertexts texts might not even correspond to a well-defined message. So uh, we cannot just say they correspond to some, uh, uh, to some message, messages X. So what we do is uh, we define a, an extractor X that given uh, uh, those ciphertexts extracts plain text messages and uh, we can now pass them on to the circuit C compute on C uh, and pass the output again to the simulator. And uh, we require that those two uh, distributions are indistinguishable under adversarial choice of public key C1, C2, C3. Uh, sure, if, if the public key is maliciously chosen, there uh, might not be a well-defined secret key. But we uh, require that C, uh, those two distributions of C are indistinguishable given under this malicious choice of PK, uh, the, cipher, the input ciphertext C, and some uh, auxiliary input maybe. And uh, one thing uh, we immediately notice is that this extractor here cannot be efficient, right? There's no setup assumptions involved here. So uh, if, we, if this extractor was efficient, we could directly use it to break the in-CPA security of 
the homomorphic encryption scheme. And uh, let me remark one more thing. Uh, Ostrovsky, Paskin, and Paskin, who introduced this notion, showed that uh, it can actually be obtained in a, a rather simple manner from semi on a circuit private homomorphic encryption. Basically, what you do is, uh, once you're finished with the computation of some semi on a scheme, you set some information theoretic garbled circuit on top that verifies that this uh, uh, computation has been done correctly and only then releases this ciphertext C. All right. So, um, uh, when we uh, use such a cer maliciously circuit private um, FHE scheme uh, uh, to do secure function evaluation, what we get is uh, that the FHE directly add security against a semi on a sender. So as long as the sender only sees the ciphertexts or uh, um, behaves honestly, then he can also see the outputs of the receiver. Everything is fine and we can simulate. Um, however, uh, it's different with security against malicious receivers, right? Um, in order, uh, the security experiment for circuit privacy involves this unbounded extractor, uh, which means that if this circuit C that we want to compute comes with uh, some security, some computational security guarantee of its own, uh, we're sort of sort of in a bad place. So we can directly use this uh, this protocol that I showed based on. Uh, um, circuit private FHE to compute functionalities that have uh, sort of some information theoretic flavor that don't have any computational hardness notion attached to them. Um, as I said, uh, simulation in this case will turn uh, uh, any adversary, also an efficient adversary, into an, un an unbounded adversary. Uh, this will prohibit further composition. Okay, uh, but, but then the question is, what if we want to use this approach on uh, some cryptographic functionality where we cannot hope for anything better than computational security? This is where our work uh, starts. Um, we will first provide some well-defined security notion for uh, um, cryptographic primitives in this setting. Uh, so what happens if we take a cryptographic primitive and run this protocol uh, on it. We will uh, um, uh, provide a uh, new secur security notion uh, called uh, SFE with induced game-based security uh, for crypt cryptographic primitives, and this will hold against uh, malicious receivers. And uh, uh, in our paper, we'll also show uh, that uh, having a malicious party on one side is the best we can hope for uh, since there's, uh, since otherwise we could overcome some, uh, uh, some strong black box impossibility results. And uh, uh, one crucial point will be that the underlying primitive uh, that we're looking at comes with a certain kind of hardness reduction on its own. So I'll show you a novel, novel way of compute, uh, composing security proofs in a non-black box matter uh, that uh, allows us uh, to compile uh, the security uh, reduction of some primitive into a security reduction for, the, uh, um, for our output protocol. Um, that's what I said. And the main idea of this uh, technique is to take a reduction for a primitive and evaluate some part of this reduction inside a homomorphic encryption scheme. Uh, we'll see that uh, in a moment. But first, I'll uh, define this notion of induced game-based security. Uh, think we have some cryptographic primitive F. Uh, think of maybe, uh, again, digital signatures they come with some security experiments, say the EUF CMA experiment where uh, the adversary is provided access to some signature oracle, uh, can query messages and receives signatures on that. 
an uh, induced game-based uh, security is uh, basically defined uh, via uh, a similar experiment. We don't, we don't change anything uh, on this side, but now, instead of giving uh, the adversary access to the primitive directly, uh, the primitive is evaluated underneath a homomorphic encryption scheme or any uh, other uh, SFE protocol uh, you may think about, but for simplicity, let's stick with homomorphic encryption. So instead of having direct access to F, uh, to F can choose a public key and, encrypt and encryptions, send this here, and the uh, primitive uh, F is evaluated homomorphically, uh, so A gets an output uh, ciphertext. And as I said, uh, uh, this homomorphic experiment is really identical to, um, to the original experiment. The only change that we do is uh, in A's access to this primitive. All right, um, let's start out with a, a naive try to base the uh, security of this homomorphic experiment uh, on the underlying uh, security of the, uh, of the primitive that we use, right? So now we want to show that uh, such an adversary here just has negligible advantage in uh, uh, winning such an experiment. So uh, we're building on circuit private homomorphic encryption. Uh, so what we want to do is uh, just plug in this notion of uh, what circuit privacy provides us. Namely, we replace this evaluation that we had by first extracting uh, A's input uh, to this primitive F, and then uh, once F is computed on, uh, on this, we'll wrap the output of F uh, into a ciphertext via this simulator. So what I can try to do now uh, is just regroup machines that take uh, both extractor and simulator and pull them into this adversary A. And now uh, I actually have an adversary that plays against the security experiment of this primitive. Only problem is uh, this machine X is unbounded. So uh, we end up with an unbounded uh, adversary and in this setting, uh, uh, cryptographic primitives usually don't provide any security guarantee. So um, to get around this conundrum, uh, what we're going to do is uh, we'll look into a security reduction for our primitive. And we need a, uh, for our technique to work, we'll need a certain kind of security reduction. We call this oblivious black box reduction. Now the uh, reduction should, uh, R should be black box, uh, meaning it only makes black box access uh, to the adversary A, and it should be oblivious in some sense that uh, now the uh, oracle uh, to the primitive that uh, A requires, uh, R should not be able to peek into uh, um, A's Query, queries. So uh, the reduction can basically not memorize uh, what it has seen about uh, A's queries uh, into this primitive. And once we uh, have such a, um, by the way, let me, know, let me uh, remark that uh, this kind of reduction is actually quite common. Uh, there's uh, many, uh, reductions basing uh, security of adaptive primitives uh, onto uh, uh, security of their selective versions. So this is not uh, something non-standard. But let's equip ourselves with something like this and uh, uh, try to finish this proof now. So the uh, first two steps are actually uh, quite similar. Uh, we're using circuit privacy, and now we regroup um, our machines, but now we, we still have this unbounded adversary uh, A here. But what I'm going to do now is uh, I'll take this adversary A prime here and I'll plug it into uh, this reduction, this oblivious reduction R. Why should this, uh, this even work? Now, the reason is I required R to be a black box reduction. And black box reductions don't care how 
how some adversary breaks some primitive. It can use some super poly powers, do whatever. It only cares that uh, the adversary has some advantage in breaking this primitive. So since the reduction R is black box, it should still work with um, some unbounded adversary A prime. And what I'm going to do now is I'm basically uh, reversing the circuit privacy. So first I regroup, regroup both uh, the extractor and simulator into this oracle, um, thereby ending up with an uh, uh, inefficient reduction. But now I can use circuit privacy again to replace this uh, with an efficient implementation uh, uh, of, an homo of a homomorphically evaluated oracle. Right, uh, so even though this oracle might do something completely different than the original primitive uh, F, I have established that uh, this reduction R with a, a homomorphically uh, um, evaluated oracle uh, can actually break some hard problem P. And uh, in the remaining time, let me quickly talk about uh, two applications of this um, method. Uh, the, the first one is a rather gen generic construction of blind signature schemes. Um, we, can, uh, uh, we can take any uh, signature scheme with, an, uh, with a non-adaptive security reduction, for instance, based on chameleon hashing, and uh, the requirements that we have for the homomorphic encryption are actually quite weak, so we don't need compactness in this case. We can start uh, with a non-compact homomorphic encryption based on oblivious transfer and garbled circuits. Another uh, applications, uh, application is two-message uh, oblivious pseudo-random functions, and here uh, the primitive we start with are pseudo-random functions with oblivious reductions, and this uh, can actually be obtained from the now Rheingold PRF. But in this case, we actually do need compact FHE. So let me uh, wrap up real quick. Uh, what I've shown you is uh, that certain security reductions can be used in a non-trivial, non-black box way for uh, composition. And uh, uh, this allows us to circumvent uh, certain barriers in uh, uh, two-message secure computation. Thanks for your uh, uh, attention. <laughs>